Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex, my co-host, Anthony Rivardo. If you can tell me what this phrase is from, I'll send you Fireside Giants stickers. Chocolate! I need chocolate! If you can tell me where that's from, I'll send you Fireside Giants stickers. It's an absolute classic. Grew up on this. Should be pretty easy for those who are at least 20. Um, <laughs> but guys, today we're talking about J.C. Treader, former Cleveland Brown, center. We have John Feliciano. How much do we trust John Feliciano? I have no idea. I don't know if I trust John Feliciano. He has 323 total snaps at center. Um, he has the aggressive mentality. He has the dirtbag mentality, as, as Bobby Johnson would say. Um, but how much faith can we really put in him? You know, we want to discuss that. We want to talk about J.C. Treader on the open market. Is he worth pursuing? Maybe backloading some of that money, what he would bring to this Giants team. Um, and, you know, just really discussing this conversation because the, it really is an argument of would you rather have Daniel Jones in the best situation possible now or are you looking at this as a pure rebuild and, you know, we got to save some money and be conservative, Anthony. Before we dive into J.C. Treader and what he offers this team, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great, and I really like the prospect of signing J.C. Treader. If you take a look at his stats over the last four years especially, and really over, throughout his entire career, J.C. Treader has been a phenomenal pass blocker for his entire NFL career. And I think that, you know, when you're looking at what the New York Giants have on their roster, I really like John Feliciano as a center because he brings that dirtbag mentality and he is the leader. And we talked about that, how he has that kind of connection with Bobby Johnson, the offensive line coach already, and how he already trusts him. They're already on the same page because they've worked together before. And it's kind of the situation where John Feliciano knows exactly what Bobby Johnson is looking for, and he can help get the best out of all the offensive linemen in the way that Bobby Johnson wants him to. So that kind of connection there is really important. But that's also kind of a leadership off the field and on the practice field type of connection. So I don't think it's that crazy to say maybe the Giants have John Feliciano with a captain's patch as the backup center because of what he provides during practice. They could go ahead and get J.C. Treader. And in my opinion, J.C. Treader would be a pretty big upgrade over probably three of those offensive linemen on this on this offensive line. Right. He's probably a better, better starting center than we have at left guard center or right guard right now. J.C. Treader is a good player above average offensive linemen that the Giants, if they have the money available, I don't really know exactly how much cap space they have right now. I know it's been a tough offseason in terms of cap space, but if they have some money lying around, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I would actually support it quite heavily if the Giants were to go out there and sign J.C. Treader. But before I wrap my section up, Alex, I'm going to ask you, how are you doing today? Because someone in the YouTube comment section wanted me to ask you, how are you? Bro, I have never been better. I am great every single day. Um, even better, the Giants have Evan Neal and Kayvon Thibodeau now. It was a couple dark years, a couple dark years, depressing, but I'm feeling a little bit more spry and up to the challenge um, and really covering this team, you know, making it a little bit more exciting. J.C. Treader obviously would be a huge grab for this team. Is it realistic? Probably not, but we wanted to discuss it because um, when it comes down to it, building up Daniel Jones, giving him the best opportunity to succeed is probably the priority. The Giants do have um, six point. Two million dollars to spend right now, but if you're going to go out and get a guy like JC Treader, it's going to be about a ten million dollar per year contract. Maybe not. Maybe he's a little bit older now. Maybe you're looking at the seven to eight million dollar range. He's thirty one years old. Maybe you sign him to a two year, sixteen, seventeen million deal, and you push majority of that to next year, and you lock down your center position. But I think the Giants are pretty confident that Feliciano is going to be their starter moving forward, and Nick Gates will make a full recovery and may be able to offer some backup uh, value there. But Treader, just some insight into him, former fourth-round pick back in 2013 with the Green Bay Packers. He has been one of the NFL's best pass-blocking guards, or rather pass-blocking centers, um, it, like really historically. So you're looking at him. What does he bring? Elite pass-blocking. What do the Giants suck at? Pass-blocking. So the, the matchup is obviously there to make. The match is made in heaven. Um, you know, Feliciano has very little experience at center. But I think that it's more. it comes down more to coaching than it comes to anything else. And, you know, Feliciano has said that he's learned from some tremendous centers in the past, notably Mitch Morse uh, with the Buffalo Bills, you know, one of the better guys in the league. So he has learned how to play center, you know, what is required. And I think he's going to do a good job. And I think the Giants are pretty committed to giving him that starting opportunity. But J.C. Treader is interesting, right? He's the, he's the president of the NFLPA. So, you know, he's always trying to do what's best for the players, which probably means he's asking for a lot of money for the last couple of years, because he wants to get as much money as possible. He wants to set a benchmark, set the standard, um, you know, so other guys can benefit down the road um, as an NFL PA president. That makes sense to me, but you know, JC Treader, this is a guy that 
gives you a chance to see Daniel Jones at the peak of his abilities, right? And, and is that a, is that enough of an argument to make to justify spending money on him and, and pushing some money back to year two? Or do you think, you know, conservative approach with a rebuild in mind is where we should be thinking right now? I think it kind of is back and forth, right? Because you can kind of look at JC Treader and say, this is maybe a one-year deal and we get an immediate impact player to develop Daniel Jones this year. But I don't know, not necessarily. You could look at JC Treader and you could look at maybe signing him for a couple of seasons. He's 31. Offensive linemen usually don't retire until they're like 35, right? That seems to be the average for a good offensive lineman. So the Giants could potentially sign him to maybe a two-year deal. I know it's a little late in the offseason to try and sign somebody to a multi-year deal, but it's definitely possible for the Giants to look at J.C. Treader and say, hey, you might not be the long-term solution at center. I don't think we're getting you for five to ten seasons, being the fact that you're already 31 years old, but you might be a decent solution for the next couple of years, you know, for a rookie that might step in at quarterback next year, or if Daniel Jones is on the franchise tag or gets an extension whatever the situation might be at quarterback they're always going to benefit from having a top tier center especially a top tier pass blocking center with athleticism like jc uh, treader possesses so you could look at jc treader as not only a one-year stopgap solution at center which is in my opinion what john feliciano is is a one-year stopgap solution you could look at jc treader as a potential solution for the next one to three years at the center position yeah i mean it's it's a tough decision to make because on one side of it, you're like, okay, you see the obvious pass blocking value he brings. He gives your left and right guard a tremendous boost of, of experience and proven um, production. So Mark Lewinsky, whoever ends up playing left guard, you know, if it's Josh Azudu, you have an extremely experienced center who can help him take his game to another level. Feliciano, not experienced. This is like, we're one injury away from being in a really bad spot again. You know what I mean? Like the, the offensive line, while on paper, looks like it's gotten a lot better. We're one injury away from being like, oh, crap, you know, we're back to square one. If Evan Neal, you know, knock on wood, if Evan Neal has any issues, if Andrew Thomas has any issues, if, if for, for you know, God forbid, uh, John Feliciano goes down, who's our center? Nick Gates, who's coming off a significant knee injury, um, you know, a broken leg, rather. So, you know, you got to think about that because injuries are very prevalent in the NFL. Every year, the Giants have issues on the offensive line, missing a couple games here and there, whoever it might be. So maybe getting a guy who has a proven track record like J.C. Treader makes a lot of sense, right? Over the last five years, he's played in over a 1,000 snaps every year. He's extremely reliable, extremely reliable. He does not get hurt, and that is something you have to love about him. Last year, he gave up one sack, one QB hit, and eight hurries, um, over 1,039 offensive snaps. You know, in 2020, very similar numbers, one sack, zero hits, uh, six hurries, over 1,192 total snaps, really great run blocker, even better pass blocker, like this is a guy that if you if he's willing to sign a two year sixteen million deal, you may be like shit. Like this is somebody that you can't pass up on, right? Like that's the argument to make right now. Um, <clears throat> but then you have the the situation where like where do the Giants find the money if they want to pay him right now? Would you be willing to restructure a Leonard Williams? Would be would you be willing to restructure anybody to try and open up a little bit more to uh, more money to sign Shredder? Are you more in the boat like don't touch those contracts? Like, well, I'd rather push it back. But Joe Shane has said, I don't want to push money back. So like all these factors together suggest that we're probably not going to go this route, but it's worth exploring. I don't think you can touch those contracts just because you know what Joe Shane has in store for the future, what he wants to do. They want to free up cap space for next offseason, maybe spend a little bit more in the 2023 offseason period get some of those impact free agents, you know, when the Giants are a step closer towards being a more competitive team. I know a lot of Giants fans have high hopes. They think maybe the Giants can slip in with the seventh seed and make the playoffs this year. It's not the most realistic thing. It's not the most realistic outcome. The realistic outcome is they lose a lot of games, but they show some progress and they show some growth and they gear up for a successful 2023 season. This is kind of a bridge year, in my opinion, which is why J.C. Treader might make sense and also might not make sense. You don't really want to spend money for a bridge player in a bridge season where you know you're not going to be winning a ton of football games. But if you can get him on a two-year deal where he gets used to the Giants this year and then he's still on the team in 2023 as a high-impact starter, that makes sense to me. So the only reason that I would want J.C. Treader is not for a one-year deal. I would want him for a two- or maybe even three-year deal to make him a solution for 2023 or even beyond. That's what I look at it with. But then, again, taking a look at the money, just checked over the cap. The Giants have about $6.5 million in cap space. J.C. Treader is probably going to eat up all of that cap space. And where does the rest of it come from? 
well, I don't really think that there's anybody left to cut without se making severe sacrifices on the roster. And I don't think that there's really any contracts that you want to restructure. Otherwise, you're kicking the can down the road and you're making things more difficult for Joe Shane in terms of signing free agents in the future. You know, taking a look at guys like Kenny Galladay or Leonard Williams. Those are big contracts that the Giants might really want to get out of as soon as possible. Those are Dave Gettleman contracts. If Joe Shane didn't sign those. He didn't agree to those. He just inherited them. He might not want to keep those players around for the long run. He might be looking at Kenny Galladay like injury prone, hasn't been productive with the Giants. Not my guy. I want to go in a different direction. But if he restructures that contract, he doesn't have that opportunity anymore. He has no way of getting out of it if he restructures it. He's just going to have to stick with Kenny Galladay for basically the rest of that deal. And that might not be what Joe Shane wants to do. He probably wants the flexibility and the autonomy to say, no, I don't want this player on this team anymore. I want to cut him. So I don't see him actually restructuring any of these contracts, especially if he's doing it just to acquire a center like J.C. Treader, who might not even be here for more than one to two seasons. It's just not worth it. You don't want to tie yourself to Leonard Williams' ginormous contract for an additional season or two just to get J.C. Treader in here for one or two years. Again, I really like J.C. Treader, phenomenal player. If the Giants had the money, I'd be all in on it, but they don't have the money. And when you're taking a look at positional value, centers – they don't really add a whole bunch of wins to the win column anyway. They might make a huge impact, and it might be really important for Daniel Jones to have an above average and high quality offensive lineman in front of him. But is that center really going to start winning games for the Giants? Probably not. So it's probably not worth it to spend that money and make sacrifices by restructuring other contracts on the roster as well. Yeah, that's exactly right. And look, the the argument you made with it would have to be a two year deal. They could throw a void void year for the third year, and like you know, you don't really have many guys under contract down the road. And theoretically, if the Giants got a new quarterback next year, you have an established center, which only helps that you know that young quarterback get adjusted to the NFL. So there's an argument to be made about that if they're looking for long term. You know, they're looking for a guy who's going to come in and help the offensive line gel a lot of experience, make them better, and help a rookie quarterback and you know not get killed. So I think that's a legitimate argument to make. They could include a void year in the third season if you have a rookie quarterback. That one two million dollars is not going to mean much at the end of the day. Um, so I think like they could make it work. It's possible, um, but I just I don't get the sense that Joe Shane wants to move any money down the road anymore. He's already done it with a couple of players. You know Graham Gano. They could always cut Darius Slayton. I believe he would save them about two million dollars. They could roll over that money. But I think the Giants want to go into the season with a couple million dollars in tow. Six point five million dollars. You know you never know who's going to get injured. Just like what they did with Logan Ryan a couple of years ago. That last second signing because you know Xavier McKinney broke his foot in, in practice. So you never know. That money I think is there as a, as a cautionary thing and not to go out and sign a center. So I think my my conclusion, Anthony would probably agree that we're definitely not going to be getting JC Treader. If we do, all to the better. You know, definitely helps the offensive line tremendously with experience and stuff like that. But for for now, I think that we can probably um, assume this won't happen. But wanted to take a look at it nonetheless because uh, there's legitimate reason to believe that the Giants could be considering it due to the fact that John Feliciano has very minimal experience there, and we don't really know what he is, and I don't even think they know what he is at center. So. You know, I wanted to bring it up. Would love to get your opinions below in the YouTube comments, as always, my friends. And if you know what I said earlier in the video, I'll send you some stickers. Where did that saying come from? A little bit of chocolate. Let me know where that comes from. I'll send you some stickers, as always. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. We'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. Oh,